now in our seventh season. It's the ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. Tonight, the Cardinals, led by 25 home run man Ron Gant, meet the Astros and slugger Jeff Bagwell. It's the ESPN Sunday Night Game of the Week. Friday, Ray Lankford hit this second inning home run, and it was the only run of the game as the Cardinals continued their dominance against Houston with their seventh consecutive win. Langford later on made two outstanding defensive plays to help preserve the victory. Dennis Eckersley came on to save it, 7-0 for the Cardinals against Houston. But yesterday, Houston A, Shane Reynolds took the hill, and he was dominant as he won his 16th. Here striking out Ryan Jordan. Orlando Miller broke a 1-1 tie with his dramatic ninth inning home run, and the Astros were back in first with their first victory of the year over the Cardinals. The Astrodome, where tonight, first place will be decided at least for another day between the Astros and the Cardinals, and you can see they're right at the top of the Central, very tightly bunched. They have not been more than one game apart in the last 31 days. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller, along with Joe Morgan. We're excited. It's a pennant race, and we got the top two teams in the Central going head-to-head. -head. This is the third game of a four-game series, and two rookies, and both have been tough, especially of late. Alan Bennis for the Cardinals. He's won 11 more than any other rookie, and Donnie Wall, a seven-game winner going for the Astros. Now, Alan Bennis is going to face his Houston ball club, and like the other pitchers in this Cardinal ball club who've been doing it all year, he's got to shut down the big guys like Bagwell, Bell, and Biggio, Joe. Well, John, they have a very good scouting report on these three hitters, and so far, the starters on the Cardinals have been able to stay within that scouting report and make quality pitches, especially with men on base. They've been able to contain the Astros. They'll have to do that again tonight. Now, the Astros have only scored three runs in the two games of this series. On the other hand, the Cardinals have only scored two, <laughs> so runs have been in a premium. And uh, for the Cardinals, when you talk about offense or defense, for that matter, you talk about that outfield, Gant in left, Langford in center, Jordan in right. It may be the best outfield, all things considered, in the majors, Joe. Well, John, I think the most underrated thing about this outfield is the speed. They cut off balls in the gap. We'll take a look at yesterday's ball game. Watch this great catch by Brian Jordan. Only the speed of Jordan allowed him to be able to make that catch. The other one is also fast, so they're able to cover the gap, keep balls from going through for extra bases, and that's an added plus to their defense, and they can all hit. I think this is a very good Cardinal outfield. And a hit is the word that everybody's wondering about this weekend because nobody's done it yet. Only five runs between the two ball clubs in two games. The Cardinals and the Astros, the winner, will be in first place at the end of the night. And by the way, Ozzie Smith in the lineup for the Cardinals here tonight. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. We're about ready to begin here. The Cardinals at the Astrodome. And uh, Tony La Russa, first-year manager of the Cardinals, and his ball club has not been scoring a whole lot of runs, but their pitching has been uh, awfully good. Let's take a look at his batting order for the game tonight. It'll be Ozzie Smith leading it off at a shortstop. Ray Langford, who hit the game-winning home run Friday in center field. Ron Gant, 25 homers left field. Brian Jordan is having an outstanding year. And you see Gant has always hit well against the Astros. Jordan hitting cleanup and right. Gary Gaetti, the veteran third baseman. John Mabry hitting over 300 at first. The veteran catcher, Pagnazzi. And Luis Alisea at second base. Mike Gallego gets the night off. And Alan Bennis, the younger brother of Andy, is the pitcher. And on the mound for the Astros, also a young right-hander. 29-year-old Donnie Wall in his rookie season. And Donnie got off to a great start, John. He was 6-0, and and he had even won, they'd won four or five extra games that he had started, but he had a lull there, but now he's starting to pitch well again. Get over here. Ozzie Smith. And the first pitch of the game is hitting the left field for a base hit. Ozzie went up after that one. So Ozzie is aboard. Ozzie in there tonight rather than Clayton. And let's take a look at the Astros defensively. There you see the outfield and Biggio on the infield, the second baseman, has won two straight gold gloves. And remember, he was converted from a catcher to a second baseman, so he's done a great job of learning that position. Now, here is Ray Lankford, and we get into that outfielder part of the Cardinal batting order. And the three outfielders not only play alongside one another in the outfield, but they hit one after the other in the lineup. Langford hitting second, Gant third, and Jordan is hitting fourth. Now, Langford, uh, with the home run here Friday, has 20 homers, 71 RBIs, 27 steals. On deck is Gant, who's got 25 homers, 71 RBIs. 
And then Jordan, having the best year of the three of them, with it, 85 RBIs with 14 homers and the 307 average. All three of them can steal bases, and they all have been pretty good run producers. And that is all despite the fact that Gant spent a good long time on the disabled list. He's missed 34 games this year. Gant on deck. One and one, the count to Lankford, and back to the back at first to Zazie. And 40 years old, Joe, and yet still a threat to steal a base. Yes, he is. Ozzie Smith looks like he's maybe 30 because he's, his body has always been trimmed. He's kept in shape. And he's always ready to play. And he knows how to steal bases. High pop-up foul, and that will go back out of play on the third base side. John, you were talking about this outfield of the Cardinals, and remember... As far as I'm concerned, Brian Jordan has been the real key to this ball club this year because when Gant was out, Jordan kept kept this team in afloat. Gant's come back and helped out, and Langford, of course, has been a good player all year long as well. But I think Brian Jordan has become the most stable part of this Cardinals offense. And he may be the best of the three outfielders, and they're all good. And that hits Ray Langford. So now Ozzie Smith will move over to second base. Langford will take first. And the table is set for Ron Gant. Well, it's interesting. It doesn't look like Langford really tries to get out of the way here. Really, he does not. He just kind of drops his arm and yeah, maybe takes one for the team. I mean, he didn't <laughs> really try to get out of the way. Who taught him that, Don Baylor? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I know Don would take a few for the team, but I don't think you teach that. Now here is Ron Gant. 252 average and keep in mind that he was off to a terrible start this year then he got injured missed a lot of games he's got 25 homers and only 321 at bats and he has always killed the Astros nice pitch breaking ball 0 and 1 and we're talking about the scouting reports of both teams the pitchers on the Astros know how to pitch to the Cardinal hitters and the hitter the pitchers on the Cardinals know how to pitch the Astro hitters and I think what you see right there is the way they're going to pitch Ron Gant. A lot of off-speed breaking balls away and fastballs up and off the plate inside. And he tries it again too far outside that time. So the count is one ball, one strike. Ozzie Smith, who led off with a single, is at second base. Ray Lankford, who was hit by the pitch, is at first base. Just a half game separating the two ball clubs. But they will play another series right after Labor Day in St. Louis, and then they will be done with each other for the rest of the year. So for each ball club, there's a certain urgency in trying to put their hurt to the other while they can. That is a strike call to the inside, and Gant has struck out. Or I beg your pardon, two strikes. Well, that's the way they're going to pitch him. Breaking balls away, fastball in. And the breaking ball was away. Now he comes back inside with a fastball. You see Gant was leaning out for the breaking ball and gets caught on his heels on the inside with a fastball. But that's the way to pitch him. And again, I think you'll see that the entire ball game. One and two to Gant. He's still up there. Broken bat into left field. But right to Cangelosi. Now Gant is retired. Good job of pitching there by Donnie Wall after he's gotten off to a shaky start threw one breaking ball away that he swung at, another breaking ball away, and then he fired him up inside with two pitches, and the last one broke his bat. Gant was able to get the wood on it, but he broke his bat. Now here is Brian Jordan. 307 average, 14 homers, 85 runs batted in, and he also got up to a real slow start, and he was one of many Cardinals who allowed us how it took him a while to adjust to his new manager, Tony La Russa into the left center field on the move the center fielder Hunter for the catch nice play there by Hunter he got a good jump on that ball because when it was first hit I thought it was going to find the gap in left center field and this Astro outfield also has right. quite a bit of speed well look at this ball see it's right in the gap now you can't see the ball but there it comes Hunter came a long way he covered a lot of ground to get there in time and Donnie Walt is about is one out away from getting out of this first inning jam, which I think is very important for the Astros. Two down now. Here is Gaetti. They had two down and nobody on. And they had two on and nobody uh, down. And the pitch is swung out and missed. 0-1. Gaetti 
chasing that breaking ball. Well, that breaking ball looks like it's going to be a strike, and it starts in the strike zone, but it just keeps biting. And that's why you see a lot of hitters chasing it. They're not really chasing bad pitches. The ball starts in the zone and just continues to break out. This time he takes it. One ball, one strike. They say that Donnie Wall, who does not throw real hard, got a, a good changeup, but right. also, as we've seen here already, he's got a very good slider, but he seemed to lose it for a while. They even uh, took him out of the rotation, stuck him in the bullpen for a brief time until they could work it out. One ball, one strike to count. Change one and up. two. The changeup that you were talking about right there, a nice changeup. A lot of movement on this changeup. Watch it drop right there. See, a lot of times you throw a straight changeup and the speed fools you. He was fooled not only by the speed there, but the break of the ball, the movement on the pitch. Left field, easy play for Cangelosi. And Donnie Wall gets out of the inning. So the Cardinals let an opportunity go by the board. Alan Bennis gets ready to take the hill now as the Astros come up. And the Astros will come up. Six in the league in offense. 12th in the league, the league in hitting home runs. And of course, when you play half your games here, you're not probably going to lead the league many times in hitting home runs. John Cangelosi leads it off in left field. He's done a great job at the leadoff spot. Craig Biggio at second base. Jeff Bagwell at first base. Derek Bell in right field. You see Bagwell, after a terrible July, which was starting to get to him, I think, has bounced back big time in August. Bell in right field. Sean Barry has been a, a, a big addition to the lineup. He is at third base. He's had 73 RBIs. Hunter in center field. Orlando Miller, yesterday's hit hero with a ninth inning home run, is at shortstop. And uh, Kurt Manwaring is the catcher. Last minute substitution for Tony Eusebio came down with a flu before the ball game. Donnie Wall is the pitcher. And on the mound for the Cardinals, Alan Bennis, a rookie right-hander with 11 wins. Well, he has pitched very, very well. He started off great. Had a lull, as most rookies will. He started getting hit a little bit, and he started to be a little more tentative. He didn't attack the hitters. He was not aggressive. Now he's back to his old aggressive self. John Cangelosi will lead it off. A switch hitter. Cangelosi, a 277 batting average. Gets a lot of walks, and that on-base average always seems to be a right around 400. And that's a foul. Angelosi, of course, just coming back from that suspension. Big brawl with the Expos and the Astros. And Darwin's the one that hit Rodriguez to start the brawl. And speaking of which, I think that got him right near the ankle, and he seems to be in a great deal of pain. And speaking of the brawl, Danny Darwin took exception to Henry Rodriguez hitting a home run and standing there and admiring it. And he hit Rodriguez the next time up, and the big free fall started. And there were some great, great hopes that came out of there. Matt Delante, who was the first base coach, he said, you know, the hockey players would have been proud of this fight. Normally, baseball fights aren't that big a deal, but this was a pretty good one. And you can see that this has really hit in a tough spot because it seems to have gotten maybe near the knee. Take a look at the pitch. It looked like a slider that he was trying to throw down and in. Yes, but again, Candelosi doesn't move. Hit him right on the left knee. Very similar. Watch, he doesn't move his knee at all. He just kind of stands there and he gets hit on the knee. <laughs> And obviously, you don't have much cushion around your knee. He's limping down to first base. We'll have to see if he's able to stay in. Maybe able to stay in for a little while, but if it starts to tighten up, he'll have to come out of there. That's Mark Lavoisier, the trainer. Well, it looks like Angelosi obviously is going to try and stay in the game. He walked up the first baseline, but to shake it off but it looks like he's having a hard time doing that 
But again, it got him right on the knee. I mean, that's, that's, that spot is very tender and makes it very, you know, you're, he's going to have a problem the rest of the game. I mean, maybe it'll stay out in there while it stays warm, but once it cools off, he's going to have a problem. Well, he's going to try it, looks like, anyway. I said, Mark, I meant, meant Dave about this. Sorry. My golfing buddies. Which one, Dave or Mark? Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cangelosi looks like he's trying to convince Collins that nothing ever happened and he's just fine now. Nice hand from the crowd here at the Astrodome. So now, Craig Biggio will come up. Biggio is hitting 308. 14 home runs, 65 batted in. He's a base dealer. He gets on base a lot. And he can hit that home run every once in a while. Biggio has risen to the ranks of one of the premier second basemen in all of Major League Baseball. Up there with Roberto Alomar, Chuck Knobloch. And right now you have to include uh, Eric Young. Yes, you do. The dog man for the Rockies in that group. And that's ball one to Biggio. Very elite field of second baseman in Major League Baseball now. There are several other good ones. These guys are playing exceptionally well this year. Biggio was a free agent at the end of last year and was lured by some other ball clubs, but eventually decided to stay right here in Houston. A fairly tight-knit ball club, too, over the last few years. Guys like Bagwell, Biggio, and a number of others have grown together from the bad times. Well, we mentioned those top second basemen. Look at some of the numbers. Keeping in mind that Eric Young plays half his games in Denver, where he, in particular, has done extremely well. But the, some second baseman just doing great things right now. That is a strike. And Biggio is a guy who can hit leadoff or in the number two spot interchangeably. Alomar has done the same in Baltimore. Alomar has even hit third at times this year. Knobloch, primarily a leadoff man for the Twins. And Young has been the leadoff man for the Rockies. There's Cangelosi. He has 17 steals this year. And the stolen base is a big part of the Astros' offense. And he dives back ahead of the tag by Mabry. No score in the last of the first inning. Nobody out. And a 2 and one count to Biggio. See, the Astros have attempted 206 steals in their 130 games. So. But that's a great percentage for a team. It's almost three out of every four. Great percentage for a team. That's a excellent percentage for a good base. A good fastball by Bennis down around the knees. Strike two call. Normally your teams will make still 60 plus percent and that's pretty good but a, a good base dealer should steal three out of four and that's what the Astros are doing as a team. But Terry Collins says he gives most of these guys the green light although sometimes he will put a hold on them if he feels the situation dictates. Two and two the count. Into the hole. Ozzie with a dive. And they get the out at second base. Ozzie Smith. With one of his golden oldies, Joe. <laughs> Vintage Ozzie Smith there to get the force out on Cangelosi with Alisea covering. And as Ozzie makes his farewell tour around baseball here in Houston. Well, they give him a big ovation. John, the great thing that is all about Ozzie Smith is how quickly he's able to get to his feet after he makes a dive. Now watch how quickly he gets up. He dives. And even in slow motion, it'll be pretty quick. I mean, he gets up and gets the throw off to second base, and he forces Cangelosi, who's sliding in. But Ozzy gets to his feet quicker than any shortstop I've ever seen, whether he's diving to his left or to his right. Man. Here's Jeff Bagwell now. That's a big play with the big guns coming up. I mean, if Ozzy doesn't get to that ball, they've got two men on and nobody out. You've got Bagwell who has 99 RBIs, and behind him, Bell, who's got 102, and then Barry with 73. These are also guys who have not done well against the Cardinals this year. And that slider's in there for a strike. Well, you mentioned, Joe, how quick he is. Let's look at it in full speed now, the play by Ozzie Smith. And Ozzie Smith has always been the perfect AstroTurf shortstop. Mm. That's unbelievable. He truly is an acrobat. And then to go way inside of him, to Bagwell, and here in Houston, they get a little touchy when people start going too far inside, or what they perceive as too far inside, to Bagwell, especially around this time of year. 
Yeah, but you see the way that the Cardinals have pitched Bagwell and why they've been successful. They throw breaking balls away, and he's more vulnerable to the fastball inside than he is any other pitch. Back to the bag is Biggio at first. Biggio has 24 stolen bases for the year. Bagwell, of course, has had each of his last three seasons cut short with injuries being hit with fastballs around his left wrist. And he wears a special padding on his left hand there now to protect it with his left hand. Base hit! Biggio stops at second. Bagwell gets the hit. Again, underscoring how important the play that Ozzie Smith made on Biggio was and still is. And now Derek Bell comes up. Now watch, this is why you have to stay in tight. See, the ball is out over the plate. Pretty good pitch there by Bennis, but Bagwell can handle anything out over the plate. He can handle the ball inside on occasion. He'll look for it, but you're better off trying to stay tight on him because if you get the ball out of the plate, out over the plate, he can go to right field or he can go to left field with it. Derek Bell, he has truly blossomed here in Houston. He's become a big RBI man on top of everything else. 102 runs batted in, fifth best in the league. Two men on, one man out. Ball one. Off the close. Looks very similar to the pitch that Bagwell just hit for a single. You'll see Venice trying to throw sliders and keeping the ball down, especially to a guy like Bell, until he gets two strikes, then he may try to go up the ladder. Bell will chase some high fastballs on occasion. Fastball foul on the right field line. And that's what has made Derek Bell such a good RBI man since he came over to the Astros. He will take a lot of balls to right field, especially in, in key situations. With Merlin's in score position, he will hit singles to right field, where with him to San Diego, he basically tried to pull the ball in, on most occasions. But now he will take the ball to right center and line the ball to right field to get an RBI. Man, that's too long. Two and one to Derek Bell. You see how wide his stance is, John? With two strikes, he will even get wider. He does not take a big stride, and that's why he's become a much better two-strike hitter and a much better RBI man, because he can just line the ball to right field. See, now, that's a very wide stance. You have to be very strong to hit from a stance like that. Well, see, that didn't really step into the pitch. That one was called a strike in the outside. Two and two the count now to Bell. He's much like Bagwell in that regard. As we look at that pitch again, and that they both have that wide stance, Joe. Yeah, there's a pitch that's, again, that borderline pitch. He calls, gets a, Bennis gets a call strike on it. It's Biggio at second, Bagwell at first. One out, no score in the game. Two and two the count. That's ball, that's a foul off the right field side. And amongst the spectators, out of play, two balls, two strikes. Bagwell, as you pointed out many times in the past, has his feet wide apart and far from stepping into the pitch, his front leg often will come back a few inches. Well, that's why he can handle the off-speed pitches pretty well because he's not committing too quickly. And that's what Bell is trying to do as well. Bell spreads out, does not take a big stride, and he just fights the ball off to right field. But again, you have to be strong to hit as Bell does. Two on, one out. Another nice pitch there by Bennis. He's been able to keep the ball down, and he paints the outside corner about knee high with a fastball. He threw a slider out there to get strike one. Now here's another fastball right out there. And we'll take a look and see how high it is. Looks like it's right across the knees when it crossed the plate. Of course, the catcher caught it a little below the knees, but it's where the ball crosses the plate. Like, I mean, looked like a good pitch from the yeah. center field camera, too. Well, not only that, it's two strikes. <laughs> good enough to, <laughs> you have you to better, swing at that. Especially yeah. they already called one that didn't look as good as that for a strike, strike two. Now here is Barry, and he takes a called strike. And Venice has that outside corner knee high zeroed in. And as the game progresses, if he continues to throw that pitch, he will get a few more pitches maybe off the plate outside. If you're consistently in that area, you're going to get some pitches. Barry, 274 average, 13 homers, and 73 runs battered in. And that one will go foul on the right field line. 86 mile an hour slider up a bit that time. On to the count, though. 
You see a look at the crowd here at the Astrodome. We should have around 30,000 here tonight. We had uh, for the first two games of this series nearly 79,000 at the Astrodome. More than 43,000 yesterday. Sean Berry, the former Montreal Expo, trying to deliver in the clutch here. The Astros have had problems in these situations lately. Look out. Another hit batsman. There have been three hit batsmen in this first inning. Two of the Astros. And now the bases are loaded for Brian Hunter. Well, if anyone thinks he was trying to hit Berry there, incorrect because he had two strikes on him. They're just trying to get him to chase the fastball up. He was trying to come in. He stayed away, away, away on Derek Bell and Bagwell, so he wanted to come inside. And again, a lot of hitters just are not moving, John. That ball, had it just looked to me that he had a chance to move out of the way from that pitch. He didn't. But again, it's easy from up here. But it appeared that he had, a, had some time to get out of the way, as did Cangelosi, as did Ray Langford. I thought all of them had time to get out of the way of the pitches that they were hit by. He's your third, Bagwell at second. Barry now at first. Bases loaded, two down. Brian Hunter, the hitter. Slider, up the middle, base hit. Vigio scores. Here comes Bagwell. He scores. 2-0, Houston. Dave Duncan on his way to the mound, the Cardinal pitching coach under Tony La Russa. And Bennis, you saw how upset he looked when he hit Barry with that pitch. And then the very first, first pitch to Hunter right through the middle. And the Astros get that big hit that they've not been getting lately. John, one of the problems that Bennis has been having is closing out a hitter. He may get ahead in the count, which he has done here, but he hasn't been able to close the hitters out. A lot of times it's easier to get two strikes than it is to get that third strike on a hitter or get him to make an out, an easy out. And Terry Collins has to be very pleased to see that base hit. Look at the last six games. They've averaged more than 10 men per game left on base Friday night here against the Cardinals. They got shut out one to nothing and left 12 men on base. So they've had a lot of frustration. So. A big, big hit for Hunter. Now here is Orlando Miller, yesterday's hero. Too low, ball one. Two men on, two men out, two runs in. Barry, the man who got a hit at second base. Hunter, who got the big hit at first base. Hunter picking up his 29th and 30th runs battered in. Not normally figured as a, an RBI man. Orlando Miller. His home run yesterday, his 13th game in the bottom of the ninth inning. That was a game winner. Slider. Deep down the left field line, on the move, and tripping it is Gant in the corner. And that's he that's slammed into the wall out there, but he's holding on to it. And that's just what you were talking about yeah. at the very beginning, Joe. That's that speed that we've talked about in the outfield. I mean, round Gant ran that ball down. That ball looked like it was a double all the way. Watch this. On the dead run, and then into the wall. 2-0 Astros. Ron Gant with a spectacular play at great personal risk. And this play, watch how far he has to go before he actually catches the ball. This is the speed of this, these outfielders in the Cardinals. I mean, that's a long way, and that saved at least two runs. Look at this. I mean, he sticks his glove out just before he gets Ooh. there. Just a nice play. Thank goodness for the padding they have in the wall down there. Yeah. yeah. Rearranged a few of my bones all the way up here. John Mabry, the hitter. Cardinals, despite the excellent defense, down 2 0 as they come to bat here. Ozzie Smith made the outstanding play on the ground ball by Biggio. And Gant to end the inning. And the ball hit by Miller. Biggio gives way to the center fielder, Hunter. And there is one away. Mabry is gone. Now, for an update, here's Larry Beal. Thanks, John. Network MCI takes us to Joe Robbie Stadium, Florida, in Cincinnati. Tied 5-5, bottom of the ninth. Edgar Renteria, base hit into the hole. Here comes Jesus Tavares. Good night. Game over. Drive home safely. 6-5, Marlins. Back to John and Joe in the dome. 
Thanks, Larry. And here comes Tom Pagnazzi up to the plate for the Cardinals, the seventh place hitter, the catcher. And uh, it's in there from Donnie Wall for a called strike. There is James Mouton now in the ball game in left field, replacing John Cangelosi, who got hit on the knee with a pitch that started that two-run Houston rally. So if we get a report on Cangelosi, we'll pass it along to you. But Mouton is in there now, and he takes over the leadoff spot. High fly ball, right center field. Bell on the move, along with Hunter. Bell. Out in the pretty deep right center field. Two men gone. Quickly here in the Cardinals' second inning, and Luis Alice will come up. 2 nothing for the Astros as we play the second inning. Remember, the Astros had been beaten up all year long by the Cardinals until yesterday. The Cardinals had taken the first seven meetings of the year between the two ball clubs, and as Bagwell put it after the game yesterday when they finally won, he said, hey, you know, it was so big for us to win today because not only would they have made it eight in a row, but taking the first two games of this series, we'd be looking at having to take the last two games of this series. It really takes a lot of the heat off. And suddenly, they go out there and get a couple of runs despite some great Cardinal defense, uh, almost playing like a team that is feeling a little more relaxed. See, the Astros have had a hard time scoring runs against this Cardinal pitching staff all year long. Although, six of the eight games have been decided by two runs or less, so they've stayed in the games. They just have been particularly lacking big hits against the Cardinals all year. And remember last year when they played the Reds, they just could not beat the Reds. And in order to win a divisional championship, you have to be able to at least hold your own against the teams that you're fighting for the division. Three and two now to Alice say it. I mean, if they would only split, you know, with the Cardinals, they'd have a, you know, a four or three game lead now. Well, three and a half, technically, but all you have to do is fight off the teams that are you're fighting. Struck him out. Donnie Wall quickly and efficiently sets down the Cardinals. Two nothing Astros after one and a half from the Astrodome. John Miller, Joe Morgan with you. The Sunday night baseball game of the week on ESPN from the Astrodome. The top two teams in the National League Central. The Astros with a half game advantage over the Cardinals at the start of the night and leading 2-0 here. Kurt Manwaring, the former Giants, hits one foul. Get traded to Rick Wilkins, went to the Giants. Wilkins, by the way, started hitting for the Giants here lately. And John, sometimes this change, this change of scenery will help you to start hitting. If it has Wilkins, and sometimes it'll help Manwell. And Bennis way inside. Now, Bennis had hit four batters for the season coming into this game in 153 innings. Now, he's hit two in the first inning of this game. And that's a high foul that goes back out of play down the right field line. Two balls, two strikes to Manwaring. Donnie Wall, the pitcher, and then the leadoff man, James Mouton, scheduled up next. Well, John, if you're looking at a scouting report, for the, Houston, uh, the way the pitch to Houston Astros, make mostly the scouting report is going to say you can tie them up inside, stay inside. Try to play again. And I think that's one of the reasons he has hit a couple of batters so far in this ball game. He was trying to come inside. Bagwell was able to get out of the way, but he hit Cangelosi with a pitch inside and also John Barry. So he is going to pitch these hitters inside. Did he swing? Yes. The played up by Frank Pulley. Made the call himself. Two strikeouts. Don't forget next Sunday night, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball will come to you on the Labor Day weekend from Philadelphia. Mike Piazza, Eric Karras, Raul Mondesi, and the Dodgers take on the Phillies. Todd Zeal, the former Cardinal, and uh, Jeffries, and uh, the rest of them, whoever's healthy will be in there and uh, some of you will also see Cal Ripken and the Orioles take on Alex Rodriguez Ken Griffey Jr. and the Mariners so we'll have some uh, extra coverage next Sunday night Joe and I will be in Philadelphia for the Dodgers and the Phillies next Sunday Donnie Wall quickly owing to the count to Wall he is six for 32 it's not bad for a not pitcher. bad at all I'm impressed put that in the proper context, John. 
a, we think a, a hitter is good if he hits over 300. Well, a starting pitcher is a good hitter if he hits over 200 or right around it. Well, he, he looked a lot like a pitcher there. Two men down with a couple of strikeouts. Now James Luton is coming up instead of John Cangelosi. Cangelosi leading it off in the first inning. He got a hit by a pitch. Right on the knee. And he gets him on the left knee. You see he's hobbling as he tries to go into second base. That was on the great play made by Ozzie Smith to force him at second base. I don't think he could have made it anyway. And as you saw, he limped down out of the dugout, down the steps, and back toward the clubhouse. He's suffering from a bruised left knee, and no x-rays have been ordered. So that sounds like good news. James Mouton up for the first time. The Astros have a little depth in that outfield. Mouton, Derek May, and Cangelosi. The three of them will often in split time at left field. Sometimes Cangelosi will spell Hunter in center field. There's Derek May. He's in a little depth off the bench. He's been a pretty good pinch hitter for them this year. One ball, one strike, two Mouton. There's a slider for a ball. Mouton, another guy who has a lot of speed. He's got 19 steals, 259 batting average. Looks like the Astros will finish the year with six different players with the 20 steals or more. And the fastball catches the outside. Two balls, two strikes. The Cardinals are a club that over the years you always used to think of as a, a running club. And the Cardinals and stolen nearly 40 fewer bases than have the Astros. Cardinals have a little more power now than they used to. Bloop into shallow right. Jordan can't quite get it. He was very aggressive on this artificial turf, but sometimes you don't see. You're right, and a lot of times you shouldn't be that aggressive, especially with two outs. That ball bounces away from him. It could have been an inside-the-park home run. But he made a nice play and kept it in, in front of him and kept it from going back to the wall. You like your outfielders to be aggressive, and you can't change sometimes just because you're on AstroTurf. Now, Terry, watch, he comes in. Now, if this ball bounces away from him right there, look, he's on his way in. By the time Alisea would have run that ball down, it probably would have been an inside-the-park home run for Brian, I mean, for James Mouton. Well, now Mouton is at first base, and as we say, he's capable of stealing a base as Vigio steps in. Mouton has 19 steals. Venice steps off the slab, looking him back. 2 nothing. the Astros last of the second inning. Vigio got robbed of a hit. I tell you, Joe, he was looking for a cop. <laughs> well, Ozzy Smith made a lot of them look for a cop, including like this. <laughs> well, it's fun. It was fun at the All-Star game to hear the, the huge ovation for Ozzy Smith when he came to bat right. in Philadelphia. And... Uh, now, of course, he, uh, before the All-Star game, had announced that this would be his final season. And each stop around the league now is usually a, some kind of a, a ceremony, some tribute paid to him. The fans are applauding the Wizards, one of the, the greatest defensive players ever to play the game in any position, much less right. shortstop. The Astros gave him some cowboy boots yesterday, and he wore them out the home plate <laughs> when he brought out the lineup card. Great McLean, the owner of the ball club, bought him some, some cowboy boots. That's right. With his number on him. <laughs> and bought in those straight. And, and Ozzy, who's very fashionable, always looks yes. good. And he looked good in those. <laughs> he said he may have to go out and get a whole new wardrobe to wear with him now. One ball and no strikes to count to Biggio. Back one on deck. There goes Mouton. And a good throw, and he's out. Tom Pagnazzi, uh, Pagnazzi guns him down. Alan Bennis, then Ozzie Smith coming up. 2-0 Houston after two. We'll be back. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week is brought to you by Office Depot. Taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. From the Astrodome, Sunday Night Baseball, I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, your Sunday Night Telecasters. And we got some pennant race action tonight, big time. The top two teams in the National League Central, just a half game separate in the two of them. 
and some hostile <laughs> reaction here from the Houston crowd for Alan Bennis who hit two of the Astros in the first inning but then it, it really cost him he ended up giving up two runs in that inning and he takes a strike from Donnie Wall. It's all in two. Alan Bennis is eight for 50. But that's a little better than his brother Andy, who is nine for 59. Alan hitting 160, Andy hitting 153. Wall makes short work of it. Now Ozzie Smith, who's on that farewell tour around the National League, he had some rather interesting comments for us about that. It's been wonderful as I've gone around, people saying that don't do it, you know, don't quit yet. You know, you, you still play well enough to, to play another couple years. But, you know, I'm at peace with myself and my decision. So um, it's, I'm firm on my decision right now, but who knows? Uh, we're baseball players, we're athletes, so we change our minds pretty frequently. <laughs> now, and I think the key there was he's at peace with himself. I think that's what you have to do as a player before you can actually walk away from the game. And he takes ball one from Donnie Wall. I think single to left his first time. And but that was interesting, though, Joe. I mean, he was, he was leaving a little, uh, oh, yeah. a little the door ajar well, there. Wasn't I think he? Ozzie Smith thinks that he can still play. I mean, I read some articles out of St. Louis. He says he can play as well as anyone. He said the problem is that people compare him to himself. And that's the most difficult comparison anyone can make. One ball and two strikes to Ozzie. He says, sure, he's not the same player he was, you know, eight to ten years ago. He's not as quick or whatever. He says, but at that time, he was the best. He said he still feels that he can play as well as anyone, but the comparisons hurt him. I mean, whenever he does not get to a ball, inevitably, it is yeah. said, well, Ozzie would have gotten to that one five years ago or three years ago. But the question is, would any other shortstop have gotten to it? Down he goes. Donnie Wall has struck out three straight St. Louis Cardinals. Two down, nobody out. Yesterday they had the ceremony and Ozzie was presented these cowboy boots by Drake McLean. They made him an honorary Texan <laughs> before the game and then he brought the lineups out wearing the cowboy boots. Well, I tell you what, I bet he could play shortstop with those boots on. He was that good <laughs> in his prime. I don't think he could do it now, but in his prime he could have. Howdy, Ozzie. Number one. Howdy, old wizard, old buddy. <laughs> Here's Ray Lankford and he takes low for ball one. Do you have a pair of those? I mean, you? I have a couple of pair. When I came back to Houston from Cincinnati, they gave me two or three pair. And a changeup swung on a miss by Ray Langford. One ball, one strike. Langford was hit by a pitch his first time. Two nothing, the Astros ahead. Top of the third, two down, nobody on. Ron Gant is on deck. So they gave you like a couple of pair, and they only gave Ozzy one pair. I played here. Does, 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 <laughs> he was just passing through. Oh, okay. <laughs> I needed a couple of pair for every day. You know, I wear different ones each day. Yeah, do you say number eight on them? No. <laughs> High fly ball to center. And that's the inning. Donnie Wall. Three very strong innings. It will be Biggio coming up, then Bagwell and Bell. Two-nothing Astros. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball from the Astrodome. The top two teams in the National League Central. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. And the Astrodome has been, uh, it's really been hopping these last three nights. Big crowds. And the fans are into this pennant race. They've had uh, two very tight ball games. And by comparison, this one is uh, starting to look like a blowout. It's 2 nothing already. This is a slugfest, right? <laughs> Greg Biggio, the hitter, he was at the plate when Mouton was thrown out trying to steal the win the second inning. Biggio robbed by Ozzie Smith. It looked like a sure base hit back in the first inning. And look at that. A 147 average for him against the Cardinals this year. And remember now, most of the time he was hitting in the leadoff spot when, you know, they were playing the Cardinals. He was hitting at the top, so therefore he needed to get on base to start something, and he, and he was not doing that. So actually, he was not hitting at the top of the batting order in his earlier games. They put him up there, but he didn't hit. He didn't hit. <laughs> takes it low. He has become a real good player, though, John. You know, I remember when he started off as a catcher, I mean, he was really kind of lost a little bit behind the plate because he wasn't taking advantage of all, the, all of his ability. Now that he's a second baseman, he can run, steal a few bases, he can do a few more 
thinks. Plus, he's become, you know, maybe the premier second baseman in the National League defensively because he's won the gold glove the last two years. So that says a lot about this young fella to be able to come from behind the plate and win a gold glove at, at a different position. But he wasn't really excited about the move. The count goes three and two. He, he felt that he brought something a little bit different as a catcher who could steal bases and do what he does. He said, hey, I'll be just like all the other second basemen. But you can see his production has risen considerably since he became a second baseman. He gets in there more often to begin with. Catchers have to have a periodic day off. Well, he's not big and strong like you'd like your catcher, so he would wear down during the course of the season. Three and two, the count remains. After Biggio, Jeff Bagwell. And then Derek Bell. We get the, uh, the killer bees in this Astros batting order. Biggio, Bagwell, Bell, and Barry. Facing one of the Bennises. The killer bees and the Bennis boys. Bees everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Biggio continues to struggle against all comers wearing that Cardinal uniform. Now, Jeff Bagwell, who is also struggling. But he did get a single in that first inning rally. 2 nothing for the Astros, last of the third. You see that big pad he wears on his left hand because he had a chance to get hit there and he would break a bone there. So this pad supposedly has really helped him. He's been hit on it a couple of times. That's what stood the impact. And he takes ball one. Well, three straight years he gets hit in almost the same spot. Ending his season, basically. One of the years he actually came back toward the end. I mean, they had to do something. High in the air, deep into left center field. This one is headed for the stands. He can extend out to get it, and that's where Bagwell likes the ball. Out there, it looks like maybe it's a little slider spinning, but it didn't do much breaking, and Bagwell put a charge into it. Well, that was a magnificent home run, a high, soaring drive, sailing majestically into the bleachers to the right of that 375 marker out there, and it, it was out of here with plenty to spare. The 28th home run, the 25th given up by Alan Bennis. And this ball two to back, uh, Derek Bell. That was the true big fly right there. A big fly. Big fly. Many flies are hit, but very few are very big. big. <laughs> and Derek Bell with a mighty cut on two and zero, oh. and now it's two and one. Ninety-one mile an hour fastball there from Alan Dennis. Three nothing for the Astros. Now keep in mind the Cardinals scored one run here Friday and one. They scored one run yesterday, and we're in a tie until the ninth inning when the Astros beat them three to one. So, relatively speaking, this is a very large deficit for a team to have in this series. Three and one to Derek Bell. That's a shot, left center field, and boom! I mean, yeah, almost have to hit it out of the ballpark. To get it past one of these guys. I mean, they closed the gap so quickly out there, and we could see Langford could have caught that ball as well. Gant got another great jump on it and ran it down, but these guys covered the gap very well. Now look, look at the where this ball is up. You see that Langford's running over. He's going over. He slows up. Gant says, "I got it." And he makes the catch. That saves a lot of trouble for your pitching staff instead of having runners at second base or third base and back on the bench. Two down now, and here is Sean Barron. Three nothing for the Astros. Jeff Bagwell's home run, adding a run. Third ball, too high. Now one of the big 
Lays in that first inning, a two-run rally, an 0 and 2 pitch to Barry that got away from Bennis and hit him. Dennis himself was very upset about it. That loaded the bases, and then the very next pitch, Brian Hunter hit up the middle for a two-run single. Two and oh. This has been very patient up there, all things considered, Joe. They've been laying off those sliders out around the outside. Well, you have to be patient as a hitter. That's a high drive to right field. The playable for Jordan back near the scoreboard. And that is the inning. Jeff Bagwell takes one out of here, his 28th of the year. Astros three, Cardinals nothing, Gant, Jordan, and Gaetti coming up. We are at the Astrodome tonight, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. And here we go to the fourth inning. The Cardinals are down three nothing, and they've got some power coming up. Ron Gant, Brian Jordan, and Gary Gaetti against the right-hander, the rookie, Donnie Wall. And Donnie Wall facing the Cardinals. St. Louis, Missouri. Donnie Wall was born and raised in Missouri. Still lives there in the offseason in a place called Festus. Festus, Missouri. And that one way inside. 2-0 to Gant. Gant flying out to left his first time. Now here he is facing Gant of the St. Louis Cardinals who grew up in Texas. Victoria, <laughs> Texas. And grew up a great Astros fan. Oh! A mighty cut. And it's two and one. Well, the Astros have won all of the games where Donnie Wall finished with no decision. It's usually a pretty good measuring stick for a starting pitcher, too. How did his team do in the games he started? Much less the games he had a decision in. And they have won them all. So 13 and 4 overall, including the six no decisions, they've won all of those. It would indicate, I guess, that he keeps them in the game. League Central. It's not just the Cardinals and the Astros still alive. The Chicago Cubs are only four games out. The Reds with that big loss in Miami tonight. We showed you the highlights earlier. The Reds had a five to two lead in that ball game in the sixth inning. Still ahead five to four in the eighth, and they lost it to Florida. Big loss for Cincinnati. Here is Brian Jordan. High in the air, center field. Two minutes gone. Jordan is over two. I tell you what, when you look down the road a bit, the St. Louis Cardinals, seven of the last nine games they played this year, will be against Ray Knight's Cincinnati Reds. At the same time, in that last ten days of the year, the Astros have six against the Marlins and three with the Mets. So you would think, based on the records right now, that. That would be a big advantage for the, the uh, Astros the final 10 days of the season if they can get there, you know, ahead a couple yeah, of games. If they can get to that point and be in good shape, you're right. And I think one thing that favors the Cardinals, John, to me, is, is their starting rotation. They have a set rotation. They know who's going to go out there every day. And then they also have a fifth guy in Mike Morgan. So they have a solid staff. They have guys who you know, pitch over 200 innings. They're, they're going to probably end up with four starting pitchers with over 200 innings and that is a real good plus for Tony La Russa, knowing that these guys are going to go out there since Mike Morgan came off the stable list no one has missed a start so that's a plus for this Cardinal ball club as well there's Andy Bennis Andy foul tips it still alive but count one ball two strikes Andy Bennis speaking of uh, strong starting pitching 13 and 9 but he just had a 10 game winning streak come to an end earlier this week in Denver, of all places. <laughs> Where else? <laughs> what, what a surprise. Yeah. Gave up some home runs there, I believe. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he had a terrible start to the year, and then he was just outstanding. People, uh, he was so strong there for so long with that winning streak, people dusted off the record book, and they found out Bob Gibson had that 15-game winning streak for them. Cardinal record. Curveball, that's a base hit left center field. The center fielder Hunter racing over to cut it off. Can't get to it. Gaetti digging for second, and he'll hold up there as Mouton uh, comes up with it. A stand-up double for Gary Gaetti. Only the second hit of the game for St. Louis. 
good hitting here by Gaetti. Does not try to pull this pitch. Wall came off the plate with a fastball, and then he tried to go back away with a breaking ball. It's up a little bit, but I still think it's good hitting. It's not that bad a pitch. It's over the outside part of the plate, and Gaetti just hits it to left center field. He doesn't try to pull it. He's a veteran. He knows how to hit. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time. Now here is John Mabry. Chance to bring home a run with two down. Mabry flying out to shallow center his first time. And Joe, almost everybody has hit the ball in the air against Donnie Wall. Well, when a guy throws changeups and curveballs and off-speed pitches, you're going to be a little bit out in front, so you're going to hit more fly balls and pop-ups than you will ground balls. If a guy throws a sinker or a real good sharp curveball, you hit some ground balls. His curveball is more of an off-speed curveball with a big break. And that's the first ground ball of the game. Wall covered. That's the put out. Almost as if just to show that he could get one. <laughs> Hunter coming up. Two no or three nothing for the Astros. Sunday night baseball. Astros three. Cardinals nothing as we go to the last of the fourth inning. Alan Bennis out there. Trying to become the first Cardinal rookie to win 12 games in the season since 1971. The last time any Cardinal rookie did that was Reggie Cleveland in 71. And of course, then there's also you know, bragging rights in the Bennis family. Andy's got 13, Allen's got 11. High pop up by Hunter, first baseman. Neighboring in foul ground, says uh, Greg Bonet. One away. Now for an update, here's Larry Beal. Thanks, John. The Mets and the Dodgers. Bottom seven. Mets up 4-3. Pete Harnish on the mound. Tom Prince says, squeeze me. Suicide squeeze or scores Greg Gagne. Dodgers go on to win at 6-5. L.A., though, still a game behind San Diego in the West. Back to the Dome. What do you see in that wild card race? Montreal now just by a half game over the Dodgers. St. Louis, Colorado also in there. And uh, much further back, especially when you consider the number of teams in front of them. Chicago and Cincinnati. And we'll see the Dodgers next Sunday night from Philadelphia, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. The Dodgers and the Phillies. Here is Orlando Miller. He was victimized when he hit a shot down the left field line in the first inning with a couple of men on, and Ron Gant made a just a sensational running catch just before getting to the foul line. And the, he ended up crashing into the wall after catching the ball. One ball, one strike to Orlando Miller. They, he was a real controversial figure here in Houston earlier in the week. He was being booed by the fans after not running to first base after a swing and a miss, strike three, and a ball in the dirt. And then he, he started shouting obscenities at the fans, and he made an obscene gesture. He got taken out of the game by Terry Collins, the manager and fined and was told in no uncertain terms hey that is not acceptable to react to the fans that way miller came out apologized about it and uh, then after making a couple of errors yesterday they were booing him again and then finally he turned it all around with a big two-run homer in the ninth to win the game and tonight first time he came up big ovation for him again they love him now yes Two and two count. Man wearing on deck. Three nothing for the Astros in the last of the four. Broken back. Ozzy Smith. Out number two. Wednesday night baseball. Big doubleheader. The Dodgers and the Expos. We just showed you the wild card standings. The Dodgers and the Expos are a half game apart from each other in those standings. The Yachts and the Dodgers. Henry Rodriguez, he's got 32 homers. Then the second half, Cecil Fielder, the New York Yankees with a six-game lead in the American League East. Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr., Edgar Martinez, the Mariners at the Kingdom. And it looks like Doc Gooden would be due up by the Yankees in that one. So a big doubleheader, a lot of great stars again. And Wednesday night baseball, doubleheader. Ball one to Manwari. Two down, nobody on. For a strike, one ball, one strike. It's interesting though, Joe, you talk about the wild card race. 
it's very much in the mind of the Expos. I mean, they're 11 games right. back of Atlanta, but the Dodgers are focused on San Diego. They're only a couple of games out in the National League West. I think they're much more interested in that race than they are in any kind of wild card race. Well, you always want to win your division. I think it's more important. Deep into center field. Plenty of room for Langford. And so are the Astros down in order for the first time in the game. 3-0 Houston. We're heading to the fifth inning from the Astrodome. We'll be back. Sunday night baseball from the Astrodome. Astros three, Cardinals nothing. As we head to the fifth inning. And Donnie Wall has been uh, extraordinary so far. Yes, had, had him hitting it in the air, but uh, nobody's hitting it particularly well against him. Well, he has been able to keep the ball in the ballpark, which is important. But most of all, he's been able to keep the hitters off balance, and that's why, you again, you get a lot of fly balls because they are off balance a little bit and out in front. Well, he's had seven fly balls, a pop out to the first baseman. He's had three strikeouts. The two hits against him, both were hit in the air to the outfield. And only one man has hit the ball on the ground again. The next ball, outside ball one to Tom Pagnazzi. Pagnazzi's probably hit the, the deepest drive of the game, deep into right center. And the second one is caught. He drills this one foul deep down the left field line. And one strike. Pagnazzi, not one of those uh, Cardinals who had a hard time getting adjusted to Tony La Russa at the beginning of the year. Jordan said he did. Ozzie Smith did for obvious reasons. Ozzie lost his job to Royce Clayton. There's the ball outside, two and one. But we were talking about this earlier, Joe. But Brian Jordan said that it took him a while to understand what the Rooster was all about. Once he got into that, he relaxed a little bit, and now he's a great admirer of the Rooster. He likes playing for him, and Jordan is having his very best year under Tony La Russa. It's probably not so. Uh, you know, so yeah. incidental, really. Well, I, I think uh, you grow to respect the manager for the way that he handles your, you and your teammates. And I think the manager go, grows to respect you in the way that you handle the situations that he puts you in. And I think he put Jordan in some, you know, situations that Jordan didn't think he should be in by not playing him certain times. And I'm sure that Jordan grew to respect what Tony LaRusso was trying to accomplish. And I think uh, they have a mutual admiration society now. Sands struck out his first time and he takes a strike. Oh, it's interesting. Cardinals also had a lot of new guys come onto the ball club this year. They made a lot of changes under Walt Chuck. You know, general manager in the offseason. Strike two. But they had a very poor start. Look at that. Near the end of May, only 22 and 29. But since then, it's all come together. That's nearly half a season playing. At about a 93, 94 win pace. Going to the count to Ali Sayan. Alan Bennis, the pitcher, is on deck. 3 0 the Astros ahead. Three call. So Ali Sayan is gone. Well, we we're talking about La Russa coming over to the National League. His good friend, the manager of the Pirates, Jim Leland, talked to us about La Russa coming over. The Cardinals have an excellent ball club, and certainly they have a guy in charge over there that knows exactly what he's doing. And I think, you know, I think Tony's playing possum a little bit. I think Tony knew all along what he was doing. There was never any question it was going to be any major adjustment to the National League. Uh, you know, a few little tricks that he's talked about. You know, he's, you know, he, he's going to be as prepared or more prepared than anybody. And, uh, you know, the National League hasn't even faced him. I mean, that may be a good conversation piece, but that's a lot of bull. And of course, the, the whole thing was La Russa saying, yeah, he's new to the league and he's probably making a little few mistakes here and there. Jim Leland wasn't buying that notion. That's a bunt by Bennis. Donnie Wall's going to have to hurry. Just in time. Donnie Wall's got a two hitter going through five, three nothing Astros, Wall, and then the top of the order to follow when we get back. We're in the pennant race, Sunday Night Baseball from Houston, ESPN, Astros equals pennant winners. Well, I imagine, Joe, that a lot of folks here in the Houston area this week have had to check with the doctors for a case of <laughs> pennant fever. You're right. I mean, the crowds here the last three days have been excellent. That tells you that pennant fever has reached here down deep in the heart of Texas. 
Donnie Wall, the pitcher, leads it off. He struck out his first time against Venice. Slider hit high and foul off the right field line. Back out of play. You see part of that big crowd here tonight. Three nothing for Houston in the last of the fifth. goes to one ball and one strike. Alan Bennis, brother of Andy, five years younger than Andy. So they never played any, any teams anywhere together as kids. First time they played together with teams. And they both got here to the Cardinals this year. Alan, of course, had been signed. He was a first-round draft choice of the Cardinals. Made his way through their farm system. And they seem to live sort of a, an idyllic childhood. Their father, Charles, used to mow the lawn at the uh, Little League field. Down on strikes is Donnie Wall for the second time. And mom was the secretary at the church they went to. So I guess she still is, for that matter. And their mother also was a part-time piano teacher. And all three of the Bennis brothers, there's a third one who is not a ball player, all three of them play the piano. We ought to have them over sometime, Joe. <laughs> classical or you know, we'll have a little barbecue and we'll all sit around the piano here's James Mouton and he takes a strike it is 0-1 he's had a single in his only at bat entering the game in the second inning for Cangelosi now you see the brothers Bennis and uh, they both made a turnaround as have the Cardinals the Cardinals turnaround kind of coincided with theirs one ball one strike and that makes sense because this is the two of them make up 40 percent of their starting rotation it's interesting John that Allen does not go to big brother Andy there for advice very often Allen said he's been telling me what to do all his life because you know he was the big brother and Andy says well sometimes I'll say something and he doesn't accept it he'll go to Dave Duncan the pitching coach and he'll say the same thing and he said yeah that's great it works two and one the count up the middle base hit Mouton <laughs> brings, out, brings out the mowing here in the Astrodome well this pitch is up a little bit and Mouton just lines it right back through the middle good hitting doesn't try to pull it Lines it back through the middle for a base hit. Fastball. Single offensive. So Mouton on aboard. He got thrown out trying to steal in the second. Biggio coming up now. You know, Alan Bennis, we mentioned how Andy, with his 10-game winning streak, had people talking about Bob Gibson and the team record of a 15-game winning streak. Well, Alan has a sort of a connection to Bob Gibson as well. There goes Mouton. Thank God he's thrown. And he got him again. Ozzie Smith with the tag. And that was definitely just looks like just a straight steal. If Mouton stays in there, it's going to hurt the Astros field percentage. I thought he had a pretty good jump this time. Now he hesitates just a little bit. He runs in place there. He picks that right foot up and puts it back down. But Tagnazzi comes up and throws the strike, gets rid of it quickly. And Ozzie Smith nips him as he goes by. No question about it. To two down, nobody on. Biggio with a count of one ball and no strikes. That's a foul. One ball, one strike. Biggio is 0 for 2. Well, Bob Gibson went to Creighton University, and so too did Alan Bennis. Bennis finished his career there, third on the all-time list of winners at Creighton. And of course, uh, as we say, Bob Gibson is from Omaha. Also went to Creighton. Did Alan play basketball? Allen was an all-round athlete. But I don't think he played basketball at Creighton. Well, Bob Gibson was an excellent basketball player. Played for the Globe Trotters. Well, I'm not saying that <laughs> Alan Bennis really duplicated anything other than right. the fact that he went to <laughs> Creighton. <to> Creighton. Okay. <laughs> and was a good pitcher at Creighton. Let's say we'll stop there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Creighton. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look that mean on the mound to begin with. <laughs> you know, although Bob Gibson told me, Joe, everybody always talked about his sneer on the mound, right? Yeah. I mean, he 
he told me that he wasn't sneering. I mean, he kind of made some hitters a little bit afraid the way he, he looked. He looked so mean out there. He said that he, you know, he didn't see all that well. But he didn't want to wear glasses on the mound when the catcher would drop the sign. He had to squint to look in just to see what the sign was. Well, I'm one of the hitters that's glad we didn't know he couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> There's a curve driven to left center. But a lot of room again. And that is the inning. Bagwell will lead off the next inning. We're heading to the sixth inning. Three nothing for the Astros. The top of the order coming up for the Cardinals. Smith, Langford, and Gant. We'll be right back. Top of the sixth inning. Still three nothing for the Astros over the Cardinals. But the Cardinals come up with the top of the batting order. Here in the sixth against Donnie Wall. Ozzie Smith, who singled the left on the very first pitch of the game. Little did we know then that Wall was going to settle in as quickly as he did. The Cardinals have had only one hit since then. Ozzy struck out in his second at bat. He is one for two. He'll be followed by Ray Lankford and then Ron Gant. Three runs, five hits for Houston. No runs, two hits for the Cardinals. And he changed up on him and fooled him. And it is 0-1. By the way, lest we go uh, much longer, let me just say, uh, we're talking about the, the Bennis brothers. Yes. And how the two of them are pitching in the big leagues. The, the third Bennis brother, Adam, and I, I slighted him a little bit, he also is a pitcher, and he is in the Cardinal Farm System. Here's the one-strike delivery, and that's low. So that's one day, if he comes, depending on uh, how much he progresses, they might all three pitch here for the Cardinals. I thought I remembered that note from Peter Pastorelli's note when we were going to do the Atlanta at St. Louis game. That's right to the shortstop. Orlando Miller. Close him out. coming up now Adam Bennis is in class a ball in Peoria did you ever play in Peoria no no I've heard of it but I've never played there. now Ray Lankford has been hit by a pitch and he is flying out to center Lankford hit the home run here in the second inning on Friday and what a shot it was I mean way out of here to the right of straightaway center but the Cardinals have only scored one more run since then. In fact, in the 23 innings of this series, coming into this inning, the Cardinals with only two runs for the whole series. One ball and one strike. 23 innings this weekend. Coming into the Astrodome is a little bit different than, say, going to Coors Field. I don't think they want to go there either. Well, the Cardinals just came from there, and they got swept at Coors Field. The Rockies, in fact, Jim Leland's Pirates then went to Denver on Friday and promptly beat the Rockies. And we're told that uh, Tony La Russa received a call from Leland about 2 o'clock in the morning Houston time afterward. Swing and a miss and a changeup. Two and two to count. And Leland gave him what for about... Said, well, I thought it was so tough to beat the Rockies here in Denver. We played it tonight, we beat him. What's the matter with you? Poor managing, it sounds like. Two and two, the count to Langford. Jim Leland and Tony La Russa have long been best of friends. He just misses. Leland also gave his old friend a little help here in Houston earlier this week. I mean, the Pirates came in here and really duked it out with the Astros. Three and two to Langford. Ron Gant is on deck. And he walks him. That is his first walk allowed in this game, and not a good time to do it. Not with the big guns coming up. Only two hits allowed. And he, I mean, he couldn't be getting real tired. He's only thrown 66 pitches. I think that was the great statistic there. Only 66 pitches through five and a third innings. That is the first walk of this game by either pitcher. Now again, it's fly to left and pop to first. And that change up again. All in one. You can see that he's consistently worked Gant away with off-speed stuff. And he throws him a fastball that's off the plate inside. And he has been able to handle Gantt so far in this ballgame. 
but that Ron Gant makes good adjustments. He knows what he's doing at the plate. And back to the bag at first is Langford. 3-0 for the Astros. Langford has stolen 27 bases in 30 attempts, but down by three, and with the power coming up, uh, you don't figure he's going to be running here, do you, Joe? What? That's a foul. 0-2. Oh I really don't think you can stop what you do best, John, This at this stage of the ballgame. Now, if you're talking about the eighth inning, I would say no. But if you can get one run here, they're only down by three. If you can get one run here, one run along the way, then you're back in the ballgame. Uh, it's very difficult sometimes when you fall only three runs down to start waiting for the big fly or somebody to, to drive you in. I think you can still manufacture runs when you're only three runs down. One and two now. Brian Jordan is on deck. And especially when you have a percentage like Frankfurt has, 27 out of 30. That's almost a gimme. He has made it 90% of the times that he has attempted it. Right. Now you see Gantt been a very consistently strong power hitter when he's actually been in there. There goes the runner, swung out of miss strike three, and it's a steal for Langford. Gant down on strikes, but Langford beats the throw from Manwaring. And I think that's what you should do. And another reason I think you should do that, John, is he's throwing a lot of change-ups. And if you can pick the change-up to take off on, you don't give Manwaring a chance to throw you out. Pretty good jump there. Although he's looking back in a long time, but he gets a good jump and he beats it. That was an off speed pitch change up from, ben, from Donnie Wall, so he's able to make it. 28th steal of the year. Now Jordan takes ball one. Just a basic, I mean, a run here. And that's a good point to bring up, too, John. With the runner at first base, you have Gant, you have Jordan. They're going to be up there trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. You steal second base, as Langford did. Now they only take the singles to get you back in this ballgame. You take a little pressure off your hitters. And that one is fouled back to the screen by Jordan. One ball, one strike. They don't have to go for the fences. They can just try to hit a single here and get themselves back in the ballgame. And look. Now, look what Jordan has done this year with men in scoring position. Right. And he's been the best in the league in spots like this. Brian Jordan playing baseball full-time. Former NFL player with the Atlanta Falcons. And that's a ball. Two and one. Interesting, John, because there was a time when a lot of people thought Deion Sanders was the better baseball player of the two. And I think time has proven that you know, Jordan stuck with it, and I think he's going to be rewarded for it. Dion went back to what he does best, and that's play football. Three and one. Gary Gaetti is on deck. Oh, Donnie Wall walking Langford with one out. Now he's in danger of walking Jordan, and there's Gaetti, who is capable of tying this ball game with a couple of men on. Gaetti hits with a lot of power, and has hit a double tonight. So a big pitch here. And he walked it. Well, if I'm the Astros bench, I start to get a little shaky about now with Donnie Wall simply because it seems that all he's going to is change-ups and off-speed pitches. He had a 3-2 count with a three-run lead to Langford, and he threw him a change-up on three and two. That's the time you have to challenge the hitter with the big guys coming up behind him. And now you see him going almost exclusively to off-speed pitches. Uh, that tells you that he's probably getting a little tired or he's lost some confidence in his fastball. Gaetti has fly to left, and he has doubled to left center. A double now could mean a couple of runs. Ball one. Another changeup. So he has not, I don't think he's thrown one good fastball this entire inning. Well, uh, it's the third time through the batting order. Exactly. I mean, they've seen all of his stuff now. And Powell and Gaetti way behind it. Hit it deep down the right field line. Well, he's thrown so many change-ups, Gaetti wasn't ready for that fastball. But again, I think his fastball makes this change-up more effective. If you throw some fastballs, you'll get him to chase some of the change-ups out, out of the strike zone. 
But if all you throw is change-ups and that's all they see, they will not usually chase them too often. And the breaking ball outside, 2-1. and one. Gary Gaetti, who hit 35 home runs for Kansas City last year. There's Lankford at second. Jordan at first. Both run extremely well. And with two down, they'll be running at the crack of the bat. Gaetti's got 17 home runs so far this year. He also spent some time on the disabled list earlier in the year. High drive down the right field line, and this one is fouled. On the fastball, and again, he was late on it, Johnny. Well, well I, I think you can throw your fastball. I mean, you throw your fastball to set up your breaking ball. Two and two the count. Three nothing Astros. Tried the fastball on the outside, missed with it. Now the runners will be going. Three and two with two down. And if you're Kurt Manwaring behind the plate, what do you call here? Do not want to give in with a fastball, but he's been missing with his changes. The left-handed batting Mabry is on deck. The runners go. Right center field. Base hit. Coming in to score is Langford. Jordan will be held at third as Hunter gets it back in. Well, he dug the hole for himself there by just not throwing the fastball early enough in this inning. And then he gets behind here and he gets a count to three and two and he throws a fastball. Guy Eddie lines it. This is a high pitch. It may be out of the strike zone, but Guy Eddie jumps all over it and lines it in the right center field. There was a moment there where it looked like Brian Jordan may try to score. Now here he comes to third base. Now if this ball is bobbled by Biggio or gets away from him, you would see Jordan try to score there. Brent Strom, the pitching coach, out to talk to Donnie Wall. Meanwhile, there is bullpen activity for the Astros. Two walks and out of base hit by Gaetti. There is uh, Xavier Hernandez, a right-hander. Now he's joined out there by left-hander Alvin Mormon. The batter is John Mabry. And this guy's become a real tough hitter. Mabry has kept his average up over 300 all year long. Not with much power, only 11 home runs, but he does have 61 RBIs. First and third, two down. And again, the off-speed pitch, the changeup. And yet, I, I just believe that he was using his fastball very judiciously early in the ball game, using it to get ahead in the count, and then getting him to help him chase the breaking ball. Popped up. Barry has it, and the inning is over. So the Astros get the one. Now Houston will try and pat its lead. Big power hitters coming up. Bagwell, Bell, and Barry. Three to one, Houston. 3-1 Astros as Bagwell comes up in the last of the six. Well, John, at the beginning of this ball game, they were pitching Bagwell in and off the plate. And every time they see this pitch, this was the first time. After you hit Sean Burry, everything else was away. Now, this is really in the third inning anyway, it's a home run. A pitch away, another pitch away, and he hits a home run. Let's see if he goes back inside now. But remember, after you hit Sean Burry with a pitch in the first inning, he has not pitched any of the Astro hitters inside since that time. So Bagwell, two for two, hitting 313 for the year. It's away. And he he tried to murder it. Strike one. And the point you made when he was visibly upset when he hit Sean Berry. And then after that, the next pitch was a slider out over the plate that was hit in the center field for an RBI single. So it seems to me that he's gone away from the pitching pattern that the Cardinals have employed against the Astros earlier this year and when they were winning these ballgames. Third ball. Ozzie Smith, and he does not come up with it. So the error for Ozzie Smith. Well, Ozzie did everything right except stay down. He actually charged the ball. And let's see something that you haven't seen very often. Look at that. He charged it, and he just kind of took his eyes off of it. Watch his eyes. Well, he just kind of took his eyes off the ball. He didn't follow it all the way into the glove. And that's something that, I mean, you just 
you rarely ever see from Ozzy Smith. Was he sneaking a peek at the runner to see no. where he was? Yeah, well, you do that. Ozzy can do it and still catch the ball most of the time. This one he just happened not to be able to control. Now Derek Bell. Bell has struck out and lined out to left center. Now Bagwell, you got to keep an eye on him. He's liable to run. He has 20 stolen bases for the year. Terry Collins has nothing but words of admiration for Bagwell. He talks about his, his work ethic, how hard he studies this game. He says he's not that fast, but he has made himself an excellent base runner. All on to Bell on the slider. By the way, it should be noted, I mean, the, this Astros franchise has never been known for big offense. When Bagwell hit the home run in the third, that gave him 100 RBIs for the year. Bell already with 102. This marks the first time in the history of the franchise that they've had two 100 RBI men in the club in the same year. And they've had some good hitters over the years here. Yes, they have. They had several players driving 100 runs, but never in the same year. Jimmy Wynn, my ex-roommate, the toy cannon drove in 100, I know. He drove in 107 in 1967. Hit 37 home runs that year, Joe. And out of the 107 RBIs, probably 40 or 50 were you. I'd say more like 70. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he was my roommate. I had to get on base for him, you know. <laughs> and, of course, uh, Lee May. Yeah. What a great trade that was. The guy, yeah. Lee May. Yeah. And brought the fences in. I couldn't understand that. <laughs> I mean, uh, how could the Reds trade Lee May for a light-hitting second baseman like You're that? You're right. You're right. Hey, that's what they felt in Cincinnati. <laughs> that's what they thought when I got there. One and one. Lee May drove in 105 here in 73. The year he first got here, he drove in 98. So Lee did what, what they asked he was him supposed to do. To do yeah. yeah. Of course, the guy that May got traded for went to Cincinnati. Started winning MVPs. Kind of made it look bad. Mm -hmm. You made Lee look bad. <laughs> Not. You can't make Mo look bad. <laughs> The big bopper, he made. One of the great sluggers and one of the great chief gentlemen of the game, yeah. yeah. One ball, one strike to Derek Bell. Back one at first. How about Bob Watson? Drove in 102 in 76 here. Yeah, oh, man. that's the guy that, that was Lee May, or rather, uh, the man that Lee May got traded for. You know, the problem is, that's why I didn't hit well here. I had those glasses on. Man. <laughs> I got rid of them. I'm surprised you did anything well in those days <laughs> wearing those glasses. <laughs> Two and one the count. And again, you know, to emphasize the point again, every pitch this inning has been away from the right-handed hitter. It's okay to pitch away, but you have to come off the plate inside sometime just to keep them honest. I mean, they're not going to chase pitches out there unless you keep them honest inside. And again, he's changed his pitching pattern since the first inning. Bagwell at first, nobody out. Three to one, Houston ahead. Sean Barry is on deck. Three and one. So I think in order to make a pitcher conscious of what's going on and, and to work as he should, you have to pitch inside, outside. You have to move the pitches around. And right now, I see Pagnazzi just setting up consistently toward the outside corner, and Ben is trying to hit it. What happens there sometimes, you start to aim the ball, so you end up missing with him, instead of letting it fly as you would if you're throwing a fastball off the plate inside sometimes. Popped up. On the right side. Now he's saying, and that is hot number one. So he gets Derek Bell. Now, Sean Barry will take a shot at it. Well, well, back at first. John, that was unusual for Bell. He got a pitch to hit, and he looked like he was trying to jerk it. He was ahead in the count. He knew a fastball was coming. It looked like he really tried to muscle it, which is not his normal swing. Sean Barry hit by the pitch, which not only was a big play in the first inning, but as you talk about the different pattern that Bennis has been using ever since, a big pitch psychologically yes. for Bennis. Yeah. Now watch, this is a fastball in. He was ahead 0-2. He was just trying to come off the plate inside, and he hit Barry. And as you mentioned, that also, you know, led to the Astros scoring a couple of runs that inning. But again, since that time, he, he, 
I guess he doesn't trust his fastball off the plate inside, so he's staying away. One out, Bagwell at first. Barry flying to right his last time. He's 0 for 1. Back to the screen. One strike to come. Oh, we're on the topic of the Astros and 100 RBI man. Right. Bob Watson also had a 110 RBI year. He did it twice for the Astros. Cesar Cedeno did it once. And Glenn Davis oh, yeah. did it once back in 1986. A, a great year for Astros baseball. They won the division title in 86. And then in a great playoff series, eventually succumbed to the New York Mets. One strike to count to Barry. And it's one ball and one strike. I had to mention the Watson stuff because Bob's probably watching. Oh, general yeah. manager of the Yankees. And actually, he was general manager here, and he helped put this ball club together. See Alan Dennis's number. He has not walked anybody. It was club in the ball game, but right now the Astros, with a man at first, trying to had their lead. Three to one. Six inning. Houston on top. And slider away. Two and one the count. Bob Watson made a big trade this week. Yankees have been uh, looking for a left-handed reliever all season long. And he picked up a good one. Graham Lloyd from the Milwaukee Brewers. I have a question on that. Would, wouldn't someone from Baltimore claim Lloyd or something on to keep him from getting through waivers? He, he must not have been claimed. No, obviously he wasn't claimed. <laughs> Nobody claimed him. They say the Cardinals uh, tried to float Tony Foster through. Right. And uh, somebody did claim him. Three and one now. So Barry, so another big pitch here for Alan Dennis. With Brian Hunter, the man who hit that two-run single against him with the base loaded in the first on deck. This is a good time, I think, to send Bagwell from first base. There he goes. That one is hit deep into right center field. Langford has it. Bagwell all the way to second has to turn around and beat a hasty retreat. I think if you're the Astros, you keep the ball out of the air. I mean, these guys just close the gap. When that ball was first hit, it looked like it was extra bases in the gap, but Langford got there very easily. Now, see how far he has to go? This ball is hit very hard, but look, watch, he ends up having to slow down. He almost overruns it. <laughs> These guys can fly out there. Uh, hey, next time, hit one that's hard for me, will you? <laughs> Ray Langford. Two down, now Brian Hunter. Hunter with a two-run first inning single. Fouled out to first in the fourth. He's one for two. Got that, uh, got that Bagwell look at the plate, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Oh, and that bat cocked yeah. up behind his ear. I was going to mention when I saw Bagwell hitting, kind of re remind me a little bit of Plantier. He was like sitting down. Remember, they both came from Boston. He was sitting down a little bit, Bagwell was. Well, Bagwell's got that uppercut stroke. Yeah. And that's what Plantier has. Or has. He's still hitting on the mound, isn't he? Well, he's back. he went to the minor leagues for a while. Yeah, came back and he also. worked in that, trying not to have quite so much of an uppercut. He had great success. Up in Canada, triple-A ball. One ball and no strikes to Hunter. And Bagwell back again. You know, I, I would think that would be probably more difficult than you can imagine, John, trying to change that swing that he's had for 15, 20 years. I mean, that's almost impossible to make that kind of a change this late in your career. So if he's able to do that, my hat's off to him because that takes a lot of discipline. One ball, no strikes to Hunter. Two down, Bagwell at first. The Astros lead three to one. And a pitch out, but Bagwell wasn't going. Well, I mean, Hunter, the odds of Hunter getting Bagwell home with Bagwell at first are pretty slight. I mean, uh, Hunter, is uh, he's a singles hitter. So it makes sense that Bagwell would try to go at some point here. Was that pitch out an open invitation for him to go now? Well, he knows they can't pitch out again, 2-0. Oh. Absolutely a miss. Two and one. Hunter with a big cut. Maybe he heard you. He's going to try to drive one in the gap and get him home from first base. Well, he's got to be running now. This is what I've decided. You've decided that two and one? I'll tell you in a second. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't right. think so. All right. Two and one the count. And there's a high top up. Shallow right center. And Alisaia takes it. 
I knew he wouldn't be running. <laughs> what for? It was just a pop-up. <laughs> After six innings, three to one, Houston. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week is brought to you by Denny's Hologram Baseball Cards with three and a half seconds of actual game footage only at Denny's. Sunday Night Baseball only on ESPN. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Astros ahead three to one as we go to the seventh. John, you wanted to know why I didn't think he was running. I'll tell you after the pitch. Pagnazzi, the hitter, takes ball one from Donnie Wall. A changeup. I think it was because of Pagnazzi. Mouton took off the first pitch after he was thrown out his first time running. Caught by Vigio. One away. Nice play. He looked more like a power forward there than he did a little short second baseman, didn't he? Nice play there by Biggio. He timed it perfectly. And look at this. Right at the Whoa. height of his jump. That takes perfect timing. Wow. I mean, he's up there a little bit. I wonder if he could dunk. Must be wearing those Air Jordans. <laughs> Man, that, he, he got off he the ground. He was up there. He must have a little uh, trampoline under that uh, aspect turf out there. Strike one to Alisea, who has struck out twice in this game. Now the pitcher spot, Bennis due up third in the inning, and the Cardinals have some bullpen activity going. Here is Corey Bailey, a right-hander, warming up in the bullpen. And strike two on the inside. And now Mark Sweeney has come out on deck. So he would be the pinch hitter for Bennis. There's Sweeney. Three times for Alisea of the five total for Donnie Wall. And that's interesting because Alisea is in there for his bat. He's a pretty good hitter and he's had some success the last couple of weeks. You can see the changeup. It moves away from him. And I think that's what makes Wall's changeup so effective. See, that ball is actually moving away. So when a change of speed hurts and also the movement, and Alisea can't believe it that he has struck out three times. Switch hitters don't normally do that. And by the way, that is six strikeouts now for Wall. Three of them, I say. Here's Mark Sweeney. Sweeney is eight for 34 as a pinch hitter. A little bit below 250. That's a high foul out of play. Two down, nobody on. So Alan Bennis is finished. He went six innings. Allowing three runs, five hits, and he will not be able to get his 12th win tonight. Unless Sweeney could start a rally here. We saw the Cardinals score at least three times and go ahead. One ball, one strike. You see the Jugs gun reading there. Alan Bennis got into a little trouble. A little wildness in the first inning. And it, it may have cost him two runs. I mean, we don't know what... But for his but, head afterwards. Yeah, and we don't know what Barry would have done if he had not been hit by the pitch. And he had him all in two, though. We know that. And he had him right where he wanted him. Let him off the hook, and then Hutter with the big two-run single. And that's really the, the big sequence of the game. Two and two now. Got a fastball. Cardinals have had a, an excellent scouting rotation this year. And this Astro rotation is not bad either. And it's Shane Reynolds won his 16th yesterday. And it's Reynolds. And he, this guy has really emerged big time. Become one of the best in the league. Kyle and Hampton have each won 10. And now Donnie Wall. He's done well. And they... Breaking ball, the changeup for strike three, his seventh strikeout. We go to the last of the seventh inning. Orlando Miller coming up, three to one, Houston. I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan, Sunday night baseball from Houston. We've got a good one going here in the pennant race. 
The Astros leading three to one, going to the last of the seven. Well, Donnie Wall has pitched great, and the Astros have pitched very well in this series. They've gotten some key hits, clutch hits, home run from Bagwell. So right now they're in control. Next week we'll see the Dodgers in Philadelphia on Sunday Night Baseball. The Dodgers under their new manager, Bill Russell. Well, Bill Russell. Has, there are some people who say he's going to get the job for next year, but I think a lot of it's going to depend on how the Dodgers finish the rest of the season. There's Bailey. He's the new pitcher. That game next Sunday, of course, at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific from the vet. The Dodgers and the Phils. Here's Bailey. You see his numbers. Orlando Miller will lead it off. Orlando he is 0 for 2 after his dramatic ninth inning game winning home run yesterday. This guy seems to attack that low pitch, doesn't he? I mean, that yeah. slider against uh, Stoudemire yesterday was the game winning home run. He got a low slider in the first inning tonight and whacked it down the left field line where Gant made a great catch on it. And he just attacked this one, which was down. That's unusual because the pitch that Stoudemire threw him yesterday looked like a pretty good pitch. Wasn't quite as far away from it as he would like, but it was a pretty good pitch, and then it was down. Stoudemire said that if he had it to do again a hundred times, he'd throw that same pitch a hundred times. There's Xavier Hernandez coming up in the bullpen. Donnie Wall do up third here in the inning. Man wearing on deck. Three to one, Houston. And that's inside from Bailey. Two and one the count. There's Donnie Wall, seven innings. He's given up only three hits to the Cardinals. I think if you're at Terry Collins and you get an opportunity to add another run here, you will. And so I think if, if Miller gets on, you may see Manwaring bunt him over and then a pinch hitter to come up for Donnie Wall. There's some kind of a ball that got loose out onto the field in right field, and Brian Jordan is retrieving it. Why, it's a baseball. He's got a big swing, John, and I mean, you're right, he does attack a little bit. I remember two or three years ago, this guy just was up in the minors. We had a Sunday night game at Wrigley Field. He just filled in one night for Cedeno and hit two home runs. Way outside. Dirt. Three and two the count. Thirty one thousand six hundred nine the paid crowd tonight and for the three games of the series up till now the total is at one hundred ten thousand. Swung on and missed he struck him out and he chased that low slider. Now the season premiere next Sunday of NFL countdown a new name in the same faces 90 minutes of the best free game show on television. It'll be Berman, Theismann, and Jackson, and the whole NFL Countdown gang. 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. The season premiere next Sunday morning on ESPN. Kurt Manwaring, a fly ball to right center. And Lankford calls off Jordan. Out number two, Manwaring quickly gone. Derek May has come out in the on-deck circle to hit for Donnie Wall. <laughs> Derek May comes from a baseball family. Yes. Son of a former major leaguer, Davey May. Derek hitting 254, five home runs, 32 batted in, seven for 21 as a pinch hitter. Big 33 average. And Bailey, that slider, foul ball, 0 and 1. Corey Bailey is making his 39th appearance. And Joe, in 43 innings right up to the moment, he's only given up one home run this year. That is played deep at first base by Mabry. Bailey covering, and uh, the side is retired in order. It'll be the top of the order coming up. 
for St. Louis. Jeff Bagwell went deep in the third to make it three runs. Donnie Wong with seven innings of three hit ball. Stay with us. Now to the eighth inning. Sunday night baseball's game of the week. Three to one. The Astros on top as we go to the eighth inning. You see the Astros two in the first, one in the third. The Cardinals one in the sixth. And that's been all of the scoring. And here is Xavier Hernandez. Three wins, four losses, three saves, and a 4.94 ERA. Hernandez who is uh, from Port Arthur, Texas. That is ball one. He throws a, a good split finger pitch, and he throws it a lot. Ozzy Smith leading it off against him. Hernandez has been in the Blue Jays system. Right through the legs of Barry down the left field line. Ozzy with a big turn at first. He's going to go for second. And Mouton couldn't come up with it initially. He might have a couple of errors on that play. Well, Ozzy made up his mind he was going to go when the ball, when he looked around first base, he looked up and saw that. Now watch this, it goes right between the legs. He tries to stay down on it, but he can't quite get there. But Ozzy, Ozzy never actually stopped, but he did slow up, so I guess they are going to score it as two errors. Error on the third baseman and an error on the left fielder. So both Barry and Mouton get errors. And now here is Langford. So not the best of timing for a defensive miscue. With only a two-run lead late in the game. And there's ball one to Langford. And the power coming up. I think if you're the Astros, you have to just say, okay, we'll concede that run and just make sure, try to get three outs. You will take three outs to give up and give up that run just to get three outs. By that, I mean you don't try to do anything fancy. Ground ball to the right side. You don't try to get Ozzy Smith. You're trying to just get the sure just out get now. the sure out. One ball, no strikes to Langford. He's been hit by a pitch, flying to center. Then he walked, stole a base, and scored the Cardinal run in the sixth. Next swing, strike. Good fastball by Hernandez. Good movement on that fastball. It started over the middle of the plate. Langford went to attack it and just kind of moved away. You see, it has not done well against Hernandez. Hernandez just turned 31 nine days ago. And Bagwell in fair ground gets the put out. And Ozzy Smith to third base. Now Ron Gant. Take a look at Bagwell on this play. He tries to make sure he stays down on it. Looks like he's limping a little bit on his right leg. It looked like he may have turned his ankle over a little bit trying to make sure he stayed down on that ground ball. Jeff Bagwell. That's not what Houston fans want to see. They don't want to see him limping around. Now again, there's a shot down the left field line, but it's going to be fouled. This is the eighth inning. And Gant, with 25 home runs, I mean, he's the man the Cardinals want to have up there. He is the possible tying run. But he has never hit well a, a few times that he's faced Xavier Hernandez. But he does have the one home run, but you can see there he was way out in front, and I'm sure that Hernandez is going to feed him a lot of off-speed pitches featuring the splitter. Brian Jordan is on deck. Under third one out. Popped up. And Bagwell is on the distance. Out number two. And I tell you what, waits at third. Yeah, that was a pitch that Gant would like to have back. He looked like he waited on it. And watch the swing. He's right there. Everything is there except he dropped his back shoulder just a little bit right there. I mean, that looked like a pretty good pitch to hit. He had it timed well. He's not fooled by the speed. And he just gets under. So now Brian Jordan, who is an RBI man for the Cardinals, but not the big home run man that Gant is. Jordan, 0 for 2 of the walk. Right to third. Barry's got this 
this one. And that's the inning. The Cardinals are now one for nine with men in scoring position in this game. The top of the order coming up. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week is brought to you by Glidden, the company that makes the world a colorful place. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week continues now. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. We're glad to have you with us. Every Sunday night, we've got a ball game for you. Next Sunday, we'll be at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. We'll get a look at Mike Piazza, Eric Karras, Raul Mondesi, and the Los Angeles Dodgers. As they take on Todd Zeal, Greg Jeffries, and the Philadelphia Phillies. The Dodgers, one game back of the Padres over in the West. Padres are hanging in there. They hammered the Phillies today, 11-2 out in San Diego. And guess who's leading the way? Ricky Henderson has gotten hot. He's scoring a lot of runs, getting on base for Caminetti and Finley and the guys. So Ricky Henderson can be a He'll play a big part for the Padres down the stretch. Now the Astros, top of the order against Corey Bailey. Here is James Mouton, who is two for two. He's replacing Cangelosi in the second inning. However, that's the, the upside. I mean, two hits and two at-bats. The, the downside is that he then got thrown out trying to steal both times. <laughs> so it's more in the category of two for two, and so what? <laughs> breaking ball one ball one strike and he also committed the error in, in left field enabling uh, Ozzie Smith to make it a second base in the uh, first half of this inning Mouton cousin of Lyle Mouton of the Chicago White Sox base hit and he's three for three all right is it going Joe well let's see if he, let's see if he <laughs> decides to try it a third time or if they're going to try maybe a hit and run. I don't think you'll see them give back Biggio up here, but you may see them hit and run. Fastball is supposed to be inside, but it's out over the plate, and Mouton just lines it to right field for a base hit. See that pitch out over the plate? Well, he's got to go, Joe. But I think it's a perfect situation here because, you know, Biggio can hit the ball all over the field, so you just try to pick a pitch. And hit and run. Biggio is 0 for 3. So then we'll force play. Fly to center. And fly to left center. And back to the back goes Mouton. We must also say that Biggio 0 for 3. He got robbed by Ozzie Smith back in the first inning. Of what looked like a sure hit. Corey Bailey in relief of Alan Bennis. And the one thing that's in the Astros' favor here is Bailey has been around the plate. So if, 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 you know, if the guy is throwing strikes or at least he's around the plate, you do not mind putting a hit and run on. And that's what they're talking about here. They're going to try to decide, say, if I call a fastball, I want Ozzie Smith to cover. If I call a breaking ball, then I want the second baseman to cover. I think that's what they're talking about here, who they want to cover in the event that there is a hit and run. And I think Ozzie Smith is the one that will make those calls out there. He tells Alisea who will cover but they may have wanted to tell them how they're going to try to pitch Biggio when they're behind in the counter when they're ahead. Biggio hitting 306. That's a foul. Now, was he trying to go to yes, right? He field? definitely took a shot towards right field there. And again, the hole is open on the right side. It doesn't matter whether you're a left-handed hitter or a right-handed hitter. It's just much easier for the left-hander to hit that hole you see on the right side than it is for a right-hander normally, but the hole is always there when there's a runner at first base and he's being held on. Terry Collins. Astro manager in a pennant race. And they're going head-to-head -head with the team they're in the race with right now. The Cardinals and the Astros are half game separating them at the top of the National League Central. They got one more game in this series tomorrow night. There are the standings. And then, right after Labor Day, they meet three more times in St. Louis, and then they'll be done with each other. Tony La Russa, the veteran Cardinal manager. He's been through many 
pennant races over the years. With the White Sox and also with the Athletics. <laughs> Bailey back off the slam. One ball, one strike. Mooch on at first. Bailey came up with the Red Sox, was traded to the Cardinals in spring training of last year. He came along with the third baseman Scott Cooper. Three to one, Houston. Jeff Bagwell is on deck. One and two the count. Slow off-speed pitch there. Well, one thing Bailey is doing is he is making a quick movement toward the plate, so it's a little more difficult for Mouton to read him. Let's take a look. Now watch how quickly he comes to the plate. See, not much lifting of the front leg, not much shoulder turn. He just kind of steps and throws. One and two to count. That's one of those, I just want to stay alive on this pitch swing because he made a good pitch. Bailey did. He came inside the pitch before and went away with a good breaking ball there, and Biggio was good enough to make contact. Now watch, this is what good hitters do. This is why he's hitting 300. See, that pitch is breaking off the plate outside, but with two strikes, you have to commit. But the good hitters will just get enough of it to keep it foul and get themselves stay alive, to stay alive. And maybe he'll make a mistake next pitch. And these girls can get a base hit. Which on it first. Still one ball, two strikes to Biggio. Yes, missing inside. Very close. Very close. But you see what Bailey's doing. He's going in and out. And that is really the book on most of these Astros players. You can come inside off the plate or come inside to keep them honest. And I thought that's what Bennis was going to do. And he started out that way, and then he stopped. But you see Bailey doing exactly the same thing. And he's going by the Cardinals' game plan. The fists and a foul. Two and two the count. Jerry Collins, he came to the Astros from Jim Leland's coaching staff in Pittsburgh. Terry Collins trying to keep the Astros going. I mean, this is a, a genuine pennant race for a club that has not been in many. Two and two the count. Well, Bailey very concerned about Mouton taking off. Well, he's afraid that they may have a hit and run in this situation. There's two balls, two strikes. Pretty, pretty good hit and run situation. John studying Bailey. Meanwhile, Biggio gets tired of waiting and backs away at the plate. So Bailey off the slab and Mouton back to the bag at first. And another foul ball. Well, Biggio battling it out here with Bailey. Two and two to count. Nobody out. In the eighth inning. For, the, for Bailey, his job is trying to keep this club alive in this game. The chances are already very slim, down by two. So in La Russa, he's relaying the signs of whether he wants a pitch out or not. In the dirt. And a nice job by Pagnasi keeping the ball in front of him. And Frank Pulley compounds it. First, the, the pitch bounced up and got him, looked like, under the throat. And then <laughs> Frank Pulley threw him another ball and hit him in the back of the head. Frankie, yeah. come on now. You've been around longer enough, Frankie, to know better than that. Good job here by Pagnazzi. And watch, he gets his body over in front of it, bounces up, hits him in the throat. And he, you see he's stumbling. Now, he calls timeout, but I guess Frank thinks he wants another ball, so Frank throws it and hits him on the back of the head. And oh, man. he says, what else can go wrong? Catcher takes a beating the entire season, I, and sometimes even from the umpire. 
Well, now, you got it. Now, what do you think? He's got to be going right Okay, here. he's going. All right, he's going. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes. He's got to be going. I'm 0 for 1 in saying he's going, though. He's going. It's a foul. And we were in agreement that time, yeah. see? So he had to go then. Well, remember, Biggio does not strike out an awful lot. He puts the ball in play. And that was interesting there. You had the second baseman covering. So that meant the pitch was probably a fastball inside, and he pulled it foul. If the pitch is going to be away, I think you'll see Ozzie Smith cover. The infielders can see that, and Ozzie will make the call. I'm interested to know how the Astros are so intimidated by Pagnazzi. Yeah. He threw out Mouton two times well, in the running game. Yes, you're right. That happens sometimes, though. There he goes. Down the right field line. Jordan on the move, but it is not playable. A foul ball. Well, that's 10 pitches that have been thrown out of Biggio in this at bat. And we're not done yet. And that was interesting there because Alisea was covering on that pitch. And Biggio took a shot to right field. I think he saw that on the pitch before that Alisea was covering, so he took a shot towards right field on that particular pitch. Mouton, he's taken off in the last two pitches. Each hit foul. It's a three and two count with nobody out. And Bagwell on deck. Three to one Astros. There he goes. Base hit. What a battle. That's why you become an all-star. That's how you become a 300 hitter. I mean, Biggio just fouled off the tough pitch, as we pointed out. And then he gets a good pitch to hit and gets a base hit. A lot of guys, if you're hitting 250, that slider he hit would have been a strikeout. He fights, fights, and then he gets a pitch in the middle of the plate and he pulls it in the hole for a base hit. You don't hit 300 by accident. He must have fouled off five or six pitches after he got the two strikes. And a couple of them were tough pitches. Marty Aronoff tells me it's five that he fouled off. But the Cardinals did something that was pretty smart right there. They were not going to let him hit the ball through the hole on the right side. Ozzie Smith was staying there. On the, on the, left, on the side. left side. I'm sorry. They... Jack Bagwell is single. The homer had been safe in an error. Two on, nobody out. Now, here comes LaRusso. He gets his bullpen up. Well, this could be the game right here. I mean, he's got to, Corey Bailey's got to keep his club in the game now. And the Astros are, are lined up, set up to blow it open. Well, no one is ready yet in the bullpen. Mark Petkaisek just got up. The whole infield is out there in the mound with La Russa as Petkaisek tries to get ready. And I think uh, Frank fully understands that he's just stalling here because no one was ready. So he goes out and says, what are we going to do, Tony? Because, you know, basically he's saying you should have had somebody up before. But now they're trying to stall to get somebody ready. Arusa, before going back to the dugout, looks down at that bullpen to see how Pat Kaisik's doing. Corey Bailey on the spot. The Astros ahead straight to one. Two men on, nobody out. And Bagwell, the hitter. Ball one. Mouton let off the inning with a single. He's at second. Biggio singled him to second. He's at first. Jeff Bagwell launched one back in the third inning. A booming home run to left center. Two and oh. And remember the Cardinals and the Astros will play here again tomorrow. This is a four-game series. Big pitch to a great slugger. That's a foul high and deep down the right field line. And it is two and one now. Well, this crowd has got that pennant race feel to it. They're getting into it. Bag 
well. Has turned his game around big time in the month of August. More Bagwellian in August. <laughs> Good pitch, and Bagwell just did get a piece of it. Two and two. That's the pitch that he threw to Biggio trying to end his at bat, but Biggio got a piece of it to stay alive. Bagwell chases it. That's a good slider diving down the way. Excellent pitch there by Bailey. Nothing Bagwell could do with that other than foul. He's probably glad he fouled it because he hits the ground ball off of it otherwise. Derek Bell with 102 RBIs on deck. Two and two the count. And he was just bluffing. Nobody covering it second. Luton back to the bag. And the crowd is really into it. Sometimes as a pitcher, John, you'll get up on the mount rubber and you know this is a crucial pitch and it just didn't feel right. So you'll do something to start over, either step off or do something like that. So he starts all over. He gets in a completely different climb now. He didn't like the feel of the other call. Ooh, awfully close. Three and two the count. See, that pitch there was supposed to be the pitch to finish this at bat, and it was very close. Take a look at this pitch. Now, Bagwell jumps into it. See, he's diving out there. Mm. I'm not so sure that pitch was that far off the plate, but he was diving into it. He could not have hit that in any case. Looked like he hit right into the glove with Pagnazzi. Full count, three and two. Runners are going. Base hit. Mouton scores. Biggio to third. Four to one Astros. And that's the Jeff Bagwell that his teammates have grown to know and love. It makes you pay. Second RBI of the game. That'll do it for Corey Bailey. Three straight singles for the Astros to make it four to one. Two in particular, just great at bats. Right. Biggio and then Bagwell. Bailey made some good pitches. And now Pet Kaisik will come on. Derek Bell will be the hitter. Jeff Bagwell makes it a four to one game. We'll be back. It is four to one now for the Astros. Corey Bailey got the rough treatment. Made some good pitches, but just couldn't get anybody out. Yeah, he just could not close out the at bats. And that, that's what gets you in trouble with good hitters. And Biggio and Bagwell are both good hitters. You see Pat Kaisic's numbers. The infield comes in now. Runners at first and third. Nobody out. Derek Bell, the hitter, ball one inside. Biggio at third base. And Bagwell is at first base, being held in the bag by Mabry. And the Astros now with a chance to break it open here in the eighth inning, leading already 4-1. to one. Bell with 102 RBIs for the year. Nice pitch. One ball, one strike. The infield is in all the way around for the Cardinals. The outfield are backed up and straight away. Then you see how they play it. Sean Barry is on deck. In situations like this where Bell has picked up a lot of his RBIs and that top of the order has been on base all night tonight. The top three hitters have been on base nine times out of the 12 times they've been up there. They scored all four of the runs. And that is low. Two and one the count. But I mean that's why Bell hitting only 270 has got 102 RBIs. I mean these guys get on. They run well. They steal bases. And then he knows how to drive men. Enfield playing in now. Over the inside. Now they get that inside call. Two and two the count. I'm sure Bailey sitting on the bench saying, where was that call when I needed it with Bagwell? You see how Bell has grown as an RBI man over the years. far inside. Full count three and two. Now Bagwell's at first base. So I guess uh, you got to send him here, Joe? Well, I don't I don't think you send him here, John, because the infield is playing halfway. I wouldn't let him just go ahead and hit. 
and not put any pressure on him. They have to put the ball in play. They're not playing for the double play. No, they're not playing so much for the double play. Obviously, if they get a one hopper, they may take the double play. I don't think they are. I think they're trying. They're already down four to one. They can't let that runner from third base score. Bagwell is running. Ah, you're right. <laughs> Three and two the count. But see there, now here goes Ozzie Smith. He's telling him, do not break. That's what he's telling him right there. See, because he's not going to be able to double him up anyway. That's why I don't see the purpose, being honest with you, of sending Bagwell. Because if they hit a line drive, then you double off. That's the only negative there. So Ozzie's telling Alisea, don't even go yeah, over the cover. Because Hold the not, ground. Yeah, because you don't want to, we can't get, we can't let the runner from third score. That's the point you're, that's why you're playing infield in here. Bagwell had come, or rather Abigio had come bluffing down the line from third after Petkaisic went set. And Petkaisic seemed to be a little bit distracted by that. You see uh, Bijou over conversing with Matt Galani, the third base coach. Bagwell's going. Foul! Right beneath the foot of Bijou. And a good job there by Alisea. He did not give up his position until the ball was pulled to the left side. And, that, and that's what you have to do. Now, Biggio comes down the line. That's why you always stay in foul territory, because obviously if the ball hits you in fair territory, you're out. On a three and two pitch, Biggio singled. On a three and two pitch, Bagwell got an RBI single. And now he's three and two to battle. Bagwell runs. Another foul. And Bell is up there just protecting. When he gets two strikes, he spreads out and just tries to put the bat on the ball. In this game, Bell has struck out, lined out to left center, and popped out to second. Again, the only reason I don't think that it's imperative to run from first base is because if you hit a line drive, you're doubled up, and then you're out of the inning. And you're really not going to open up any holes that aren't already opened up because they're playing in. There he goes again. Pop fly, shallow right field. And Jordan. And one hopper to the plate. Biggio holds it third. Bagwell back to first. Jordan was backed up. And he came sprinting across the turf and got there easily. Well, <laughs> that's that speed again. I mean, that looked like when it was first hit, it made drop between the outfielder and the drawn in infield, you see. But look how quickly. Jordan gets in there and he gets under control so that he can make a throw to the plate. Good job there by Brian Jordan. One out. Now Sean Berry. And a double play would end the inning here. Well, now you're in a different situation if you're the Cardinals. You have to play your infield where you can go for two. And there you see Ozzie Smith controlling the game out there. He's talking to Pet Kaisek about what to do. If it's a one hopper back to him, they want to go to second back to first for a double play. But you can see that they're playing, you know, kind of halfway now. Here's you know. a look at it. Just as you say, halfway up the middle. Barry's been hit by a pitch, fly to right and fly out deep to right center. Four to one Astros, one out. Four to one. This is an exciting part of the game. I, I really like a situation like this, John, because the runner at third is going on contact. He probably he doesn't care. He's going for the plate. Make them come to the plate and get you. Do not let them go, you know, double you, make a double play with you still standing at third base. So everything's going to happen when the ball is hit here. Everyone's going in motion. And Coyote, the second one. I say the first. <laughs> Mabry digs it out of the dirt, and they get the double play. So Petkaisic does his job beautifully against a couple of big RBI men. It is four to one Houston. Last chance for the Cardinals coming up. Gaetti will lead it off. John Miller, Joe Morgan with you from the Astrodome. Ninth inning now. Sunday night baseball. The Astros four. The Cardinals one. Xavier Hernandez to face Gary Gaetti. Fastball to strike. The new third baseman is in there now. Billy Spires replacing Sean Berry at third base. And the Astro bullpen is very busy as Xavier Hernandez goes to work here in the ninth. Cardinals have only three hits in this game, two of them by Gaetti. He is driven in their only run. He bluffs the bunt and takes the ball. 
Doubled to left center in the fourth and then singled home their run in the sixth. There's John Hudak, the right-handed, just back from the minor league rehabilitation assignment. Alvin Mormon, the left-handed. And it goes two and one. Cardinals have not done anything offensively this weekend. Only three runs and 15 hits in three games. And at that, they won one of the games. <laughs> they won here Friday, one to nothing. Kind of pressing their luck a little bit to figure that they could win every day with one, though. Three and one. Well, the Astros did not break the game open as they had the potential to do in the top of the bottom of the eighth inning, but they did come up with one very, very important run there because Gaetti, if he was to walk here, the next hitter would represent the tying run, but they have to get a couple of hitters on base now. And a pop-up. First baseman Bagwell, foul ground. One away. Don't forget now, right after the ball game, Sports Center coming up with Linda Cohn and Keith Olbermann. U.S. amateur head highlights. One of Joe's favorite young golfers in that one. Yeah. And the pennant races are heating up all around baseball. And college football. Whoa, boy. <laughs> they had a barn burner today. It was uh, down and dirty in those trenches, USC and Penn State. All of that, all of the highlights on Sports Center coming up. John Mabry, foul ball off to the left. John, it was hard for me not to pull for Tiger Woods to win the amateur because I rode a float with him in the Rose Bowl parade a couple of years ago. And you talk about a nice person and a good young man. I mean, he was very, very impressive. And so he deserves everything that he gets. And he is going to be a great golfer. He made some great shots uh, today, yes. I understand. They'll show all of that on SportsCenter. One strike to Maybrook. Strike two. One game to go in this series. So the Astros, by winning this game tonight, will assure themselves of remaining in first place through the end of the series. Strike three. And he's thrown out by Manwaring. Two men gone in the ninth inning. At the beginning of the night, the Astros in the National League Central had a one-half game advantage. And if they hold on to this, they'll have a game and a half over the Cardinals with another ball game to be played here tomorrow night. Andy Bennis, who's been the hot pitcher for the Cardinals, will face Mike Hampton. That's tomorrow night. Pagnazzi, it's ball one on the inside. And then next Sunday, we will see you from Philadelphia. We'll get a look at the Dodgers. Contenders from the West. And that's a ball. 2-0. John Hudak up in the bullpen. And they're planning on using him in closer situations when they can. With uh, Billy Wagner on the shelf with a, a pulled groin muscle. He'll be out for at least a couple of more weeks. Well, it's 3-0. Two pack nozzles. Alisea on deck. Cardinals with only three hits in this game. Yesterday, they had five hits. Their big offensive outburst Friday when they had one run and seven hits. There's a strike, three and one. Well, pennant race baseball, Joe, played the way you expected. Tight, yes. close, excellent pitching. The throw by Miller. The ball game is over. And the Astros, after losing seven in a row to the Cardinals, have won two in a row here at the Astrodome. And they lead the division by a game and a half. And for the moment, a little pennant race celebration for the Astros and their fans. Well, John, yesterday's ball game was so important for the Astros to win. Tomorrow's game is twice as important for the Cardinals because they lose tomorrow and leave out of here two and a half behind. They could have a problem. So the Cardinals have done what they needed to do. And we were glad to, to be here to watch it all happen on Sunday Night Baseball. 
Final score again, the Astros four, the Cardinals one, Wall over Venice. Now stay tuned, Sports Center coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports television. John Miller for Joe Morgan. We'll see you next Sunday night with the Dodgers and the Phillies, 8 Eastern. Now, good night from Houston.